I'm Srinivas and I'm working in a courier company. See, I've been searching for the truth for, say, I mean, say, say, since my teenage itself. And uh, I somehow I started hearing about the Quran. And when, since I was touring throughout South India, I happened to stay at different places. And at different times, I used to come across several people who were traveling with me. And I used to ask them, tell me something about Quran and all that. And of course, I prayed to God. And finally, he has sent Jahangir Bai and Kaiser Didi. They gave me every detail regarding the Quran. And uh, I'm very much convinced with the truth. The Quran speaks. And uh, I'm happy to announce that I took my shahada this evening before this session. Takbir. In your exhibition hall. And uh, See, my, I, I just have a few questions to post to Mr. Zakir Naik. You know, one is, still I do not have a Quran with me. I just hear people reading out Quran. And out of that, I, I just memorize few verses. One of them is Quran 1740, which says, Did Allah give you sons and take daughters from the angels? Truly you utter, a, I mean, you utter a lie. There is a verse. I didn't understand this, one thing. The second thing is, what is Harur? Harur, the companions of uh, men in the, in the heaven or something, friends, like spirit forms. What the brother referring to Hur, Hur. Sorry. Hur, Hur, companion. In the... Yeah, in the heavens. The brother has quoted a verse of the Quran. The verse of the Quran, the brother asked a question first. I have to congratulate you, brother. You're most welcome Thank to you. the region of peace. Thank you. Now I request one of the volunteers that please get the translation of the Quran of Sai International. Please get it, yes, inshallah. And Ask someone to get the translation of the Quran. Inshallah, I'll give you a copy of the translation so you can have a translation of the Quran with yourself, inshallah. Okay. Regarding a question that there's a verse in the Quran which says that you give daughters to Almighty God and sons for yourself. This verse is narrating, as I told you in my talk, that Allah says in the Quran in Surah Ikhlas, chapter 112, verse number 3, Lam yilid wa lam yulad, the begets not noise begotten. Almighty God doesn't have any children. So in argument to that, they say that you give children to God, Leave aside giving children, you give daughters to God and sons for yourself. It is a rhetoric question. First of all, giving children to God is wrong. And leave aside children, you are giving daughters to God. And to yourself you are giving sons. That means why are you degrading? Because in the society, you know, at that time in that society, sons are considered more superior. So why are you degrading God? And Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Maryam, chapter number 19, verse number 88, they say that Allah has begotten a son. Indeed, they've put forth the thing most monstrous. As though the sky is ready to burst. The earth to spread asunder. And the mountains to fall down to utter ruin. Allah says that if the sky had feelings and if they'd have heard that Allah has begotten a son, they would have burst open. If the mountain had feelings, the mountain would have split asunder. The earth would have split open. So therefore, to say Allah has begotten a son is the biggest abuse. So these verses, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he uses many things as rhetoric. Allah also says, tell to them, if Allah had the son, I would be the first person to bow down to him. Rhetoric again, rhetoric. That means if Allah had a son, I would be the first person to bow down, indicating Allah does not have any son. So similarly, this is another rhetoric used in the Quran, that if you say that Allah has got son, you give daughters to Allah and sons to yourselves. So all these verses are indicating that Almighty God does not beget. Neither is he begotten and he does not beget. Now coming to your second question about the companions. The word that you mentioned is Hur. And Allah says in several places about Hur. Mentioned four places in the Quran. In Surah Tur chapter number 52. In Surah Dukan chapter number 44. Surah Rahman chapter 55. In Surah Waqa chapter 56. Four times the word Hur is mentioned in the Quran. It is talking about the companions in the hereafter. When you go, this life is the test. In the hereafter, if you go to Jannah, your companions describing that they'll have all big, beautiful eyes, etc. And they'll be ladies. Now the question posed that in Jannah, if you go to Jannah, if the men will get beautiful women, what will the women get? Men will get beautiful women in Jannah, in paradise. What will the women get? 
So this question was even asked Hazrat Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her. So she said that they will get what the heart hasn't desired, what the eye hasn't seen, what the ear hasn't heard. Means even the women, for their companionship in the Jannah, even they will get something what the heart hasn't desired, what the eye hasn't seen, and what the ear hasn't heard. These are description of Jannah. They are giving you the highlights of what's going to happen in Jannah. There will be rivers flowing of milk and honey. If you're a rich person, you can have river of milk flowing beneath your feet. But that milk is different than the milk that we know. The fruit talked about in the Jannah is different than what you know. The who talked about that is different than the girls that you know. It is nothing compared even to Miss World or Miss Universe. That is far superior. 